Um, now that I hit top 15, I think it's more important to give a better estimate of what characters I think are good. So I'm a doctor. Starting off, the first thing we're going to be doing is the characters I have used the most, and then we'll go to characters that I think are very strong, and then we'll go for the rest of them. Okay, so starting off in order, Baron Geddon, I think, is a lot better than I gave him credit for. He synergizes very well in fire compositions and is extremely good in PvE, just to add to this. This is a PvP tier list, by the way, in case anyone's curious. Uh, so the thing about Baron Geddon is like Baron Geddon fits in a lot of really random comps. He could be very good with just one fire character that can proc his stuff, or he's just good in general just as a fire character. I like him a lot more than I used to. I think he's a B. I think I think Geddon actually has a lot more potential. I'm actually on the verge of putting him up here, but I think he's a B at the moment. I think if speed manipulation slows down a bit and we see more protectors, perhaps then Geddon rises up. But uh, yeah, I think he's very, very strong. Brightwing, I think, has a lot more potential, but the problem with uh, Brightwing is that scaling is too slow. The game's too fast right now for scaling to really work out. Brightwing does work in a nature composition, but I don't think Brightwing actually has enough going for the mercenary compared to other ones to really consider playing Brightwing. So it's like a C most of the time. Karen, and yeah, that's right. It's Karen. Uh, Karen is... I mean, let's get real here. Uh, is Karen an master in A at this point? I think Karen's very good. The problem with Karen is like Karen gets outscaled later in the game. Uh, and then you have mirror matches of Karen versus Diablo. But like Karen is basically ran in every single comp. So at the moment, it's probably an S tier. I think Karen's just very, very strong. Uh, Gruul has seen more play. And the point of Gruul right now is to counter Diablo because Gruul's middle equipment does prevent a lot of fire damage. Now, I don't think Gruul is A or S because I have yet to see this actually really pan out for what he is built for. But generally speaking, I think he's no longer like a D tier. He's probably like high C, low B. I'm going to give him low B and we'll probably move him down, but we'll, we'll consider it. Um, King Crush. King Crush is a lot better than I expected him to be because there is actually compositions that run King Crush to just stomp people out of the game. I had him in D last time. I'm moving him up to B. I think King Crush actually with King Mukla, like this combination right here is a B combination. Um, I do think Gruul's worse than him though. So yeah, they, these two are a lot better than I expected. You don't want to run these individually. Like you want them together. They're kind of a pair, care package together, but like if you can get them make it work, it's very good. Manoroth, I haven't really played Manoroth, but like the problem with Manoroth right now is demons aren't good. Um, if he had a little bit more going for him, he would be a lot better, but like right now he's, D. he's just too weak. He's too weak. He's too weak right now. Munis, uh, probably a C. I looked at Munis's kit, and I think once people actually start farming all the way to task seven, he gets a lot better. So I do like the fact that Munis has a lot of potential. Also, with the addition of another good Murloc, he probably goes up to like a B or an A. But right now, I think he's a C. I don't think he's that good. Natalie Selene is probably a B. Probably an A. She's very good, dude. Her last equipment making her abilities have no cooldown is pretty nuts. Fits in a shadow composition, good on her own. Probably a B. Prophet Velen to be uh, probably worse than Natalie. Velen, you almost need to use with Uther and or um, Uther and or uh, Anduin. If you have Anduin and Uther, like I'm tempted to put Velen up here, but I don't know if he's actually better than a. Uh, I don't know if he's better than Natalie Celine in the grand scheme of the game. I don't think so. Uh, Sourfang, I, Sourfang is just one of the best orcs in the game. Really good composition. Uh, the problem with Sourfang right now is like does it do enough against the comps that we've been seeing potentially yes but i don't know if he's actually like an s tier he's probably an a tier like i think people are sleeping on this character by the way um not enough people play the orc composition i think Sourfang's actually really strong Sourfang's last equipment is very very good uh that's the biggest thing that's just the biggest thing uh Tyrion fordering i thought Tyrion used to be an s i would put him down maybe like a b or an a Tyrion has a lot going from just requires a lot of time commitment to get his task but when you get all of them he's very very strong but it's probably a b is he worse than Velen? Though is the question. Still right here. It's probably fine. Taronda. I don't know if Taronda still has enough going for her. The only thing that's really relevant in Taronda's kit is her last ability with Arcane and or Nature. But like, if you're reliant on one ability plus your other ability is reliant on having another person in your composition, that's not super great. So she's probably like a C. Uh, I don't know. Um, Varian. I don't think I don't think the human compositions are that great. Uh, the problem with human compositions is that they're just not good enough. There's a lot of humans in the game, but there's just not enough humans to really, uh, make Varian that great. Varian has a lot of capabilities, but I don't know. Like I wouldn't put him in D maybe low C's. It's close. It's close. It's close. Vol'jin. Kekers. 
We don't have to discuss that. We don't have to discuss that. Uh, Matt, Warmaster Voon. I'm actually, I'm going to say a bold strat here, dude. I think Warmaster Voon is actually really underrated. Habu Gubu has been playing him in like 9,000 MMR. And I was trying to get him leveled up and then I got distracted. The thing about Voon is that Voon's worm, like the evasive worm that comes out is very strong. And generally speaking, it can one shot everything. Um, like a lot of stuff. Whatever his name is, you guys know what I'm talking. I don't know. He's a, he's a European guy. He's, he's good at the game. I think I think he's actually a B. He's probably better than King Crush, to be honest. I think that people are sleeping on him. Even probably better than Geddon. I would even put him probably higher than Tyrion. Probably around there. Very strong. Alex. The problem with Alex is that Alex doesn't have enough density of dragons. She goes from like a... She's probably like a D, to be honest. But the second she gets another dragon, that's good. She goes like here somewhere. But right now, she's a D. Anduin, probably right next to Velen. Um, if not a little bit better, Anduin can carry games on his own. The problem with Velen is like, he needs someone else to be good where Vel Anduin's just good on his own. His, his equipment that just gives him more life for every minion healed is very strong. So Anduin's probably around there. Diablo, I think is an S tier, but I'm tempted to put him on A. Uh, the problem with Diablo is Diablo's reliant on other people too, but he's good on his own. So like, uh all right we're gonna put him in ass for the time being but i'm not 100 sure garrosh i think is one of the better orcs um he is worse than sour fang i don't think he's better than anduin he's probably low a high b for the time being i'm gonna put him in low a but garrosh has a lot of capabilities to just one shot people with other orcs in the combo and makara is actually surprisingly great against fighters if fighters ever become very relevant you just put garrosh in and just one shot a fighter so that's pretty sick um that's the one thing really going for garrosh i like that a lot um we have grom <laughs> grom's the grom's the grom's the high uh the high boy in d i think he's just so garbage i don't know cool dan like the pro okay so people were really hyping up cool and i'm glad i stood my ground on cool because i didn't think cool was that great the problem with cool is that cool requires a lot a lot of actual synergistic aspects because on his own he's not that great he needs other stuff he does have the highest base health of any caster which i mentioned a lot but it doesn't make him good i think he's like low b or high c i don't see guldan ever being played like that's the problem so he's too slow like he's just too slow as a character but th by the time he gets to do anything it's like kekers illidan as much as i love illidan he's probably a c problem with illidan he's just if you can't attack the left or rightmost person and you're not hitting a a caster you're just a worse fighter than a lot of the fighters in the game but he's probably better than toronto so i'll probably put him around here jaina's the probably an a i would maybe even put jaina in s now that ice block is fixed jaina becomes so much better because kind of like the way varden is you can't really focus jaina because she always will proc an ability even if you proc the ice block so like in that case because of how strong she is she's probably an s probably an s Ice block is too broken, man. They need to, they got to stop printing ice block. I think it's around here. Pretty sure it is. <laughs> Kaku's. Um, I guess the real reason is like demons aren't good right now. Draxus doesn't do enough. Draxus needs more demons. Demons are not good right now. So yeah, Sag. Malfurion carries the nature comp on his own. So it's A. Uh, without Malfurion, the nature comp probably doesn't exist nearly as much. Probably better than Garrosh. Probably better than Anowin. Malfurion's probably around here. Uh, the problem with, yeah. Malfurion is um very very strong in terms of maybe he's better than Sourfang actually probably probably like this probably like this yeah I think this is fine Rag I think is so much better than I gave him credit for before uh he's better than Geddon right okay so the reason why Rag is so strong right now and I just showcased it is he actually just one shots Diablo if you take him out after Diablo is because he will go generally like the same speed doesn't take double damage to Diablo and therefore wins that trade. And then he's a threat on his own because he just does so much damage. I think Rag's like a B or an A, sorry. Um, probably around Anduin level. Maybe a little bit better than Sourfang. Probably like this. Rag's really strong. Rexar, I haven't really played enough of Rexar, but from what I've seen, he's pretty decent in the beast comp. So I'm going to put him where the beast comp is because the, that's generally where it is. Sylvanas is really strong. The problem with Sylvanas is I just don't think she's as good as Diablo. I think Diablo is just strictly a better character. Uh, the problem with Sylvanas is that you need to take one turn to basically do reclaim souls. And sometimes you just don't have that time to do it. Sometimes it's really, really strong. Other times it's not good enough. So I think she's, I want to put her in A. I don't think she's an S. Really close. Probably like around here. You're on here. Lich King is uh, probably a nasty A or S. 
Lich King is so good because of Frostbiting. Like Frostbiting just makes composition so awkward. Like if you hit Frostbite on Malfurion, like Fro Fro like Malfurion ceases to exist because it takes too long to set up his combos the turn after. So I think Lich King is good enough to put an S. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I'm guessing maybe here, but I think he's an S. We, we might move him down. We'll see. Thrall. I used to think Thrall is S. Um, I also think he's A. I think he's still very, very good. Um, uh, the problem with Thrall right now is he's just too slow. That's the problem with Thrall. Thrall's really good, though. Like, we, we saw Thrall being really strong. Thrall, sh like, takes a big dump on fighters, though. So I wonder if he's going to rise up in popularity. I think Thrall's an A. Like, the thing is, is, like, the more fighters we see in the metagame to counter casters, Thrall gets better because Thrall one-shots anyone. Because he does, at his max rank, I think against a fighter, without any orc synergy or any buffs, he does 40 damage per attack with Wind Fury on a fighter, which I think is a one-shot. So that's pretty good. Um, that's pretty nuts. Uther, I used to think Uther was also really good, but then I realized Uther does not do enough. His task seven is very strong, but I think Uther's a B. I think he's like probably around here. Uh, I'd maybe even put him in C to be honest, but mm, I think he's a little bit better than Gruul. He's definitely better than Gruul. If I'm putting Gruul in B, then Uther's probably around here. Um, Valera, we haven't, I, well, I did a video on Valera. For those of you who have not watched it, go watch the YouTube video of it. But Valera is nuts, I would put her in S. I put her in A. Or an S, but because she's not actually in the game, I don't want to. I don't want to raid her. Samaro, Samaro lost a lot because the problem with Samaro is that he just gets absolutely dumpstered fired by Lich King. Uh, Samaro single-handedly loses to Lich King almost guaranteed because he just becomes not that great because it's so hard to proc his double strike. So because of this, he's probably still an A. He's probably better than Thrall right now. He's probably better than Garrosh. Probably not here. Uh, maybe better than Anduin. Probably better than him. Mm, I'm same around here. Yeah, like that's the that's the problem with Samara right now. Uh Samara is still really strong though, obviously. Winning games on his own. If you're going against casters, he's insane. He one shots any caster in the game, I think. Pretty sure most casters die. Maybe Gul'dan lives, but it's almost guaranteed with Zyrella. Uh Blink Fox. Blink Fox, the reason why Blink Fox is now gonna be higher on the list and probably is an S or an A, is because Blink Fox single-handedly kills Diablo on its own and makes Diablo like not as great. Now, I know you're thinking, well, Blink Fox takes double damage, but Blink Fox has an ability that costs zero to basically cast any ability from the opposing side. Even though it's random, you're almost, you're guaranteed to go before Diablo, which is a really big deal, and you will outrace him. So she's an A. I don't know about an S, but she's an A. Uh, Brucon is... Okay, so people really hype up Brucon because Brucon has a lot of nature. Um, the problem with Brucon, though, is that... Brukhan needs to scale and his other abilities, unless you're using the lightning rod equipment, are not super optimistic on doing a lot. Like, I, I don't really think Brukhan does enough. I think he's fine. I think he's like a B tier. I definitely don't think he's A. He's not Malfurion level. He's probably B. He's probably like here. Brukhan's fine. He's just not broke. Like, he's not like amazing like people thought he was. Um, Cariel. Cariel is lacking a little bit now because the meta has kind of changed from just strictly fighters. It's more of a caster comp. So right now, Cariel is not as good. She's probably like a C even potentially a D right now, but I think she's a C. I think she's probably better than like Gul'dan. Actually, Gul'dan should be worse than Brightwing, I think. Probably like this. Really close. Uh, Cornelius sucks right now. Problem with Cornelius is like most of Cornelius' abilities are really defensive and you don't want to pull out Cornelius later in the game because he doesn't do enough against Diablo. So Cornelius is not that great. Cornelius is a big oof. Uh, Guff Rune Totem. The good thing about Guff is that because Malfurion is at least good, Guff is doing pretty well for himself out here. The problem with Guff, Guff fails to exist post not having any nature ability or any nature synergy. So because of that, he's like a B. I think he's like a little worse than Uther, to be honest. But in front there, uh, that's the biggest problem with Guff. If Guff always has a nature thing, he's like there, but it's not guaranteed, right? And he's really bad without nature. Kurtris is a lot better than I expected him to. Uh, the thing about Kurtris is that... He's really good against fighters, and because fighters are more prominent now, um, I-Beam heals the damage that you do to a character. So you could do a lot of damage to a fighter and heal it, and he kind of becomes this infinite healing god against all these fighters. So probably around a B. Anaconda, I think, is fine. Uh, Anaconda is just like a first ability bot, kind of like Zyrella is. But the one problem with Anaconda, again, is like without synergistic aspects of nature, she's kind of falling behind. So I think it's like, she's still good. I think she's maybe high C or low B. I'm going to put her low B. I think Kurtis is better than Gruul, but it's probably something like this. I think Kurtis might spike the more we see fighters. But again, we'll have to wait and see. And then we have Millhouse. I mean, 
I wish Millhouse was better, dude. The problem with Millhouse is that he's a scaler that doesn't have any synergistic aspects right now. A lot of the arcane abilities right now are not great. And don't be like, oh, Tarande is good with him. It's too slow. So Millhouse is probably there. Uh, Morgul is a lot better than I expected him to be. Morgul has potential. He's with like Murlocs. I think Murlocs might be B, but again, I need to test them or some more. Hasn't to put him on C. Uh, old Murkai, same idea. Uh, there's potential here. Munis has a, a really good ability with his taunt. So he's probably the best Murloc in my opinion, but still it's around C. <laughs> Kekkers. Um, Rakara is a lot better than I think people are giving it credit for. The thing about Rakara is that she's really... Like, if, if you guys don't think the orcs are good, it's just because the orcs haven't been tested enough right now. Uh, people are trying to counter, but orcs have a lot of synergy. Like, I'm telling you, one day, orcs are going to be the nuts. But she's definitely not as good as Sourfang, definitely not as good as Garrosh. So I would probably put her like... Probably around here. I think she's B. I think she's B. I think she's B. Uh, Scabs. Okay. Here's my boldest statement, dude. I think Scabs is actually somewhat broken. Like somewhat. Like he has... The fact that he has an ability that you can alter the cost depending is really good. The one problem with Scabs right now, though, is that there's just better fighters. Uh, I'm going to try to make Scabs work, but I don't think he's a D. I think he's like a low C. I think I'm going to try to make scabs work. Uh, Thames in Rome is an A because she, anything good with Vulgen is good enough. Um, I might, I'm going to put Natalie up here. I was, I was thinking about it. So it's like someone like here. And then Tavish is an S. If you're wondering why Tavish is an S, I don't even know where he would be. He might be the best character in the game. I may have to reorder this. The reason why Tavish is an S is because A, he has an insane amount of life with his, his uh, Task 7 equipment. Does insane amount of damage for what he does, his explosive traps are nuts against casters, and we're going against the caster matter right now. So Tavish is very strong. Varden is S. Varden's insane. Don't want to focus them, but if you if you don't focus, sorry, you don't want to focus them, but if you do focus them, then it's a huge issue. Varden's just insane. Varden's just wants to be ran in every single composition because of what they do. Antonite, okay, I'll do Antonite's last because I'm not sure. Zyrella, uh, probably right next to Samaro. I think it's somewhere around here. I would actually even consider Zyrella to be worse than Samaro. Zyrella so really lost a lot when Samaro started, like, it, once BTX kind of lost a lot of its popularities, Zyrella dropped. So she might even be worse than, like, Velen at this point, but she's still very strong. And then Antonitis, I haven't played a lot with Antonitis, but, like, generally speaking, um, Fire Comp's fine. I think he's probably, like, a B, most likely. Right there. What do you say, him for Varden? Um... It's a it's it's a they. It's the first character in Hearthstone that's a they. So that's why. Yeah, that's my choice. Uh if I got to put Valera in, um, I'd probably put Valera somewhere up here. Because I think Valera is very strong. She looks very good. Her kit looks really good. But I'll, for the time being, it'll be like this. But yeah, I think like if you're gonna cast everything here, if you're gonna craft anything here, I would right now craft Tavit or grind up Tavish. I think Karen's nuts. I still think I don't know if Karen's the best character. It might be like this. Like it generally might be like this. I think Jane is nuts. Like the fact that you can't she always gets the casting ability when she when she gets procced an ice block is very strong so that means that like the, the reason why that's so good is because if you get procced on your ice block you get an ability gone or you still get the center ability guaranteed because they can't focus you but on top of that uh they have to use another ability to kill Jaina, which is so freaking powerful because that's one extra turn where they're like potentially doing one damage also if you get procced at like 40 um she has 40 life on ice block when she gets out which is very strong but yeah that's like i think team, my, my general tier list um obviously now because i'm a better character player better player now i'm top 16 in the world right now actually i might be top 15 hold on let's refresh the page yeah <laughs>